Hey, welcome back. Now, in the previous video, we finished prototyping this level using the SuperGrid starter pack. In this video, we're going to start using some of those assets that we have in our project. Now, the assets that you use for this are totally up to you. I'm just going to show you one example of how you can flesh this out with assets. But really, this is an artistic thing. This is really going to be up to the creator as far as how to style this. I'm just going to show you something that will end up looking like this prototype only with assets instead of blocks. So one of the asset packs I've added to this is the Paragon props. This includes several folders with a few different things. And the folder that I'm interested in is Monolith. And in Monolith, we have this Ruins folder. And in Ruins, you have meshes. And these meshes are quite abundant. We have a lot of different types of meshes that we can use to sort of block out a level. So we can kind of go with this sort of stone ruins theme here. Now there are a lot of assets and it can be overwhelming if you don't know where to begin. And rather than just starting to drag things in and position them, what I'd like to do is place all of these out on a sort of palette, if you will, so that we can see what we have at our disposal, and then we can start to pick and choose what we want. So I'm going to take one of these ground blocks here. I'm going to hold Alt and drag it out and have this sort of ground off to the side. And I'm going to scale this up. So I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees that way. And then I can just scale it up to be this big, huge ground here. And this is where I'm going to drag some of our Paragon props from the ruins folder so we can see what we're working with here. So the first thing I see is this alcove wall broken and I'm going to drag it out. Now don't worry if it seems to freeze up, it's going to have to load these assets. And I'm just going to set this down here. And as I'm dragging these out, I'm going to organize them by category. So if I drag this next one out here, then it looks similar to the first one. See, they're both this sort of curved stone structure. One looks a lot more worn than the other, but they're approximately the same geometry. So I'm going to keep them next to each other. And so I'm going to keep doing this as I drag these out so that I have a whole bunch of different stones that I can pick from. And if they're all organized together by category, then I know where to look when I'm creating something of that shape. So here are three arch type stones and it's kind of cool that they're sort of similar but they're also different because you know in the future if we want to create a round wall sort of type thing we don't have to use a bunch of copies of the same thing. We can use the worn wall if we want to see something that looks a bit more broken. Okay, so that is the first three assets. Now the next thing is this big piece and I'm gonna just drag it out. And for this one, it's kind of a big sort of fancy piece. I'm gonna bring this one out far away from the others because I wanna have our building blocks on one side and then big ornate pieces on the other. So I'm gonna stick that one over there and continue. So with that big piece over there, I'm going to continue and also to make these orderly, I'm going to turn snapping on, but first I'm going to align these. These ones are not aligned to the grid or anything, but that's okay. For the next ones, I'm going to have snapping enabled. So I'm going to go ahead and enable snapping and put this to increments of 500. Now I'll go ahead and drag out this diamond base and notice that it goes underneath the floor here, but you can bring it up and then hit end and that will snap it to the floor. So I'm going to bring this over and have it in its own row here. And I'll bring in the next diamond base and bring it up, hit end. And now we have these two similar structures. Next we have arches and these arches look like something that I'd like to use in this level. Remember we had some placeholder arches. So these arches are going to come in handy. So I'm going to bring these over a bit and I'll bring in the next arch, which looks like it's the same thing, only it's a bit more worn. Now next we have this jungle camp green. It looks a lot like this other piece here. So I'm going to kind of bring it over. I'm also going to set my camera speed to six or seven so I can zoom around a lot faster. 
So here's this jungle camp green. I'm going to bring it over here. So these pieces are pretty cool because once we block out the geometry, if we want, we can start to make things look a bit more fancy by topping them off with these ornate decorative pieces. Here's another jungle camp piece. I'm going to drag that in. And I'll move the big one out of the way and stick this one in a row with the other one. And of course, I'll bring it up and snap it down to the ground. So there's another piece. I'm going to bring this other one up and snap it down as well and then align them. Okay, so the next piece is another jungle camp piece. Looks like a round piece. I'm gonna bring that in right next to the others. By the way, if you don't wanna sit through all this, you can simply fast forward to the end and then just see which pieces I pick from all these. But for those of you who would like to do it this way, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the entire process. So next we have jungle pillars. Now, when we get to these pillars and blocks, this is the stuff that I'm interested in. These pillars and blocks are gonna be used as the building blocks for our level. And I'd like to keep all those building blocks and pillars over here to the corner here close to the level because these are the ones I'm gonna be using mostly. So for jungle pillar block 01A, we're gonna bring that in right here and I'm gonna bring it up and then snap it down and simply bring the, the other blocks in and line them up. So there's the next one. Here's this one. And now we have jungle pillar block that one looks a little different. See how it's thinner. So I'm gonna bring this over to its own row and continue. So this one too, also thinner. It's gonna go next to this one. This one has the same thickness as these others. So it's gonna go into the row with them. Now this next piece is really thin. So it's gonna go in its own row. So I'll put it right there. This next piece also thin, so it's gonna go next to its buddy here. Now check out this next piece. It's got a diagonal piece to it. This I'm gonna keep in mind because I'm gonna have a lot of staircases and we'll need some sort of triangular pieces that can go under the staircase so we can scale that according to the staircase. So as I'm putting these out, I'm keeping in mind which ones that I can use when building the level. So here's a nice pillar. And these next pillars are looking very similar, so they're going to go right next to each other. Now this piece is different. However, it's similar to these pieces, so I'm going to move these pillars over by a row. And then move this one right next to it. And then the next one looks pretty similar as does the next one. So they're going to go together. Now this piece here is similar in size to these ones, even though they're slightly different. Notice that these pieces have a little groove cut in each of them. This one is a bit of a different size with no grooves, but I'm still going to put it over with the bigger blocks. Now just because it's different than these four, I'm going to move it over a bit. And it looks like this next piece is similar. So I can bring it over. And this next piece is also triangular. So I'm going to keep this one in mind as well. In fact, I might want the triangular pieces all next to each other. So just so I don't forget that these are triangular here, I'm going to make sure they're aligned with each other. So I'm going to keep them like this. Next, we have this piece, another sort of broken, ruined piece. Next is another tablet style piece, and that can go over with the other tablet style pieces over here. So I'll put it lined up with this row, only I'm gonna bring it over just a bit to line up with these. Next is another pillar. And this can go with the other pillars. And we have a block piece. This can go with this other piece. So you can kind of just watch and uh, follow along if you like. I'm just going to keep doing this. Here's another big piece. I'll just bring it over here. 
Actually, you know what? This one has grooves in it. So it's looking a lot more like one of these other pieces over here. So I'm going to bring it back over here. This next one as well. So we have a lot of similar block pieces here with grooves in them. I'm going to move these ones over a bit and continue bringing these blocks out. When I see a lot of blocks that are very similar to each other, they're just different versions of the same thing, I find that that is really good for level design because if you have a lot of repetitive geometry, then using a lot of variation in the assets that you choose will make it look less repetitive and more natural. Here's a bit of rubble here. This rubble pile will be interesting if we want to add it into the middle of a room or into the corner of a room. I'm going to stick it off to the side. Okay, next we have some stairs. Now, remember, we have some staircases in our level prototype that we're going to want to use. So why don't we bring these stairs over here because some of them get quite large. So we'll start with this first staircase. So we're going to keep all of these in mind as we're bringing them out. Keep in mind how they look, whether they're round, whether they're straight, and just kind of sort of think of our level that we prototyped and see if we can think of where we would be able to use it in our level. So here's a smaller staircase. It's actually kind of broken, so, you know, something to keep in mind. This next staircase is very similar, almost something we can put side by side. So all these little staircases look similar. I think I'd like to line them up this way because we can see whether or not they'd be easily conjoined together. Here's a broken end. I'm going to leave it right there. There are a lot of round geometries in this asset pack. And so as you're doing this, you know, think about ways that you can incorporate round geometries into your level as well. And that can make things a lot more interesting rather than all rectilinear 90 degree angle patterns. Here's a straight staircase and it's a bit larger, so I'm going to keep this one in mind as we have some larger staircases as well. This one as well. It's really exciting that Epic Games has allowed Unreal Engine developers to have these assets and use them in their projects because really these assets are top notch. I mean, they were developed for a specific game, right? They were developed for Paragon. But the truth is, you know, these are ruins. You see ruins in all kinds of different games. You can have RPGs. I mean, this is for a shooter game, but it could easily be a, a hack and slash RPG, you know? It could be really used for any type of game that you want. So this is an asset pack that you would easily spend a lot of money just purchasing from a marketplace somewhere. So we've got some stair assets here laid out, and next I'm seeing some trims. Now these trims are really cool. I'm going to use a lot of these, I think. So I'm going to bring the trim over to its own row here next to the pillars. So let's go ahead and bring the trim and start to line them up. Now once we start using these, we're going to find ourselves scaling them to fit our geometry in the prototype level. And when we do so, we're going to want to keep in mind that we want to be pretty consistent with the way that we're scaling things. And so we really want to start getting things that look uniform with each other. For example, if we're going to use a staircase, we might want to keep like a sort of template staircase that's scaled to the correct size off to the side and just keep bringing in copies of that staircase, you know, so that we don't have to keep scaling things one by one and risk having inconsistent results. We'll have one staircase on one side and then another staircase on another side, and they should be the same size, but they're not. So we want to try to avoid that as much as possible. So here's some more trim. So this is good. We have a lot of trim to choose from, which means we're going to be able to have some variety in our level. So that's great. Here's a broken trimmed corner. That's pretty cool. So this may end up being a bit longer of a video, but that's simply because, you know, it's a lot of the same thing, just bringing these assets out. And I'll just kind of speak my thoughts to you as I'm doing so. This is just kind of my workflow. 
Typically, I'd probably have an actual artist create a level for me, but we don't always have that option. So sometimes the programmer is the artist and needs to make do with what they have. Now, here's a jungle wall. Now, these walls are really cool because now we're getting into some bigger geometries. And these are things that we can use in our level because we have a lot of big walls. So I'm going to put the wall right here. Let's see how big this thing is. So it's a, a quite a bit bigger of a block, which is great. Um, I like to see these big blocks here. Another big block, a little bit more damaged. That's cool. Here's a curved one. So I'm going to stick this big curved one over to the side. Along with the next curved one. Now, another advantage to bringing all the assets out here and lining them up is not only have you seen every single asset in the folder, so you kind of have a mental image of all this, so you'll know what to go back and look for, but also you've gone through the pain of having all of these assets loaded, all the shaders compiled and all that, so you don't have to wait for it when you're actually building the level. Okay, it looks like these are all a little bit curved, except for this one, which is pretty straight. So I want this one to be probably, looks like it's a little thicker. So it's gonna go in its own row, I think. I'm gonna stick it over here. This next one is curved, so it'll go right here. Except, you know, it's actually looking like it's the same style as this other piece here. Looks like they should go together, probably. They have this little bit of a groove at the top here. I'll just keep that in mind. Not a big deal. We'll keep putting the rest of these curved walls by themselves here. So only a few more of them. Now, if our prototype were a lot rounder, we'd have a lot more use for these round ones. Okay, so here are a couple of interesting larger ones. These have some grooves in them, which are actually pretty cool. Let's move those over next to these, since they look little more similar. They remind me of the grooves at the top of a castle. Next we have some statues. Now I'm going to stick the statues over here with the other ornate stuff. Maybe right here. Mono statue. So that's pretty cool. Here's a damaged version. And of course we have a base for the statue. And these are kind of pointy at the bottom, which makes me think that they're meant to levitate or something like that. Pretty cool. Wow. So it looks like they start to move, they start to levitate. That's interesting. Did not expect that to happen. So that's pretty cool. Next we have some rings for the floor. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and skip these rings and go straight to the trim for the stone and stick those trims over here on this row with the other trim. Okay, so there are some, some trim for us here. Okay, so we now have all of these assets lined out, except for these circular ones. I, I think I'm, I'm good on the circular ones. I, you know, go ahead and do them if you want to, just to see how they look. But if I want something circular, I'll go ahead and just find it here and drag it in. But I now have this big selection of blocks, and these are what I'm gonna be copying over just to use for big sections of the prototype here. So in the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and start fleshing out this prototype and replacing the blocks here with some actual stone ruin assets from this selection that I have over here. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.